Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Wei, and today I want to share a workflow I recently developed for outpainting using Flux models. It's been giving me some great results, so I'm excited to walk you through it. First, let's look at some images generated with this workflow. Not only does it expand the background seamlessly, but it can also outpaint parts of the human body, hands, feet, and all, with almost no errors. Pretty cool, right? I'll include the download link for the workflow down in the description so you can try it out yourself. This workflow is organized into five node groups, working from top to bottom. The first group sets up the area for outpainting. The black section you see is the part that will be filled in. In the second group, we use an SDXL checkpoint to handle the first round of outpainting. Right now, direct outpainting with a flux model doesn't work too well. So we start with the XDXL model for the initial fill. However, this can slightly alter details like faces and other key features in the image. That's where the third group comes in. It restores those original details that may have been changed. Next, in the fourth group, we use the flux model to repaint the areas that were built by XDXL. This step fixes any weird transitions or artifacts left behind by the SDXL pass. And finally, the fifth group upscales the outpainted image, ensuring the final result is high quality. So that's the overall workflow, step by step. Now, let me work you through the logic and settings of each node group. Starting with the first group, we upload the image we want to outpaint. The next thing we need to do is place that image on a black background. You can see the effect in the preview chooser window. The black area around the image is what's going to be filled in. To get this layout, we use the image blend node on the left, which overlays the image onto the black background. You can also adjust the size and the position of the image here. Now let's look at the inputs for this node. Background image, is the black image that we create ourselves. The size of this black image is important because it defines how large the final image will be after of painting. We set this size using the XDXL empty laden size picker node, where you can adjust the resolution parameter. Just click on it and pick the size you want. This is key because we'll be using an XDXL checkpoint in the next step. And if the image size isn't standard, you might get weird results like extra hands or feet in the up painting or parts that don't blend naturally with the original image. That's why it's crucial to use SDXL dimensions. We don't need to touch these two nodes. The three nodes on the left will generate a black image using SDXL size. You select it and pass it to the image blend node, which creates a solid black background. The second input, layer image, is the image we uploaded for outpainting. Each of these three nodes has sliders you can drag to adjust the size and the position of the uploaded image on the black background. You can visualize how the final image will look and tweak the layout accordingly. If the outpainting result doesn't come out well, it might be due to the image layout not being quite right. So feel free to come back here and readjust it. The scale slider controls the size. Well, X% percent adjusts the horizontal position and Y% percent changes the vertical position. Before you start tweaking, it's a good idea to select Always Pause in the mode parameter of the Preview Chooser node on the right. This pauses the workflow, letting you preview your adjustments in the window below. Once you're happy with the layout, switch the node back to Pass Through to continue the workflow. There's also a text box on the far right where you can add your prompts. After finishing the adjustments in the first node group, we are ready to move on to the second group, where we'll do the initial painting using the XDXL model. For the checkpoint, we are using the latest XI version of the model from Juggernaut, and I'll include the download link in the description below. I highly recommend this model for outpainting. The results are noticeably better than with other XDXL models. We are also using the all-in-one control net model here and I'll provide a download link for that as well. When you go to Hugging Face, make sure to download the Pro Max version of the model and place it in the config.ui slash models slash control net folder. For control net, 
Select Repaint as the type. Let's set the Girl Mask by parameter in the V code to the maximum value of 64. This helps prevent visible seams after the repainting. If you still notice issues with seams, you can lower this parameter. All other settings can be left at their default values. After the odd painting, if you compare it to the original image, you will probably notice some changes, like the eyes might look bigger or the odd painted area might appear brighter. You might also see some obvious traces of the odd painting. To fix these issues, we will use the next node group to restore the original details and adjust the brightness. However, if you check with the image compare node and find that the details haven't really changed, or you are okay with the slight differences, you can skip this step and jump straight to the fourth group, where we will use the flux model for repainting. The fourth group has a switch for the image input. You can set the input parameter to 2 if you want to select the image from the second node group that was outpainted with the SDXL model for repainting. If you set the input parameter to 1, it will choose the image where the details have been restored for repainting. In most cases, SDXL outpainting slightly changes the original image's details. So I recommend using the third group to restore those details before moving on to repainting. The left part of this node is where you can adjust the brightness and color of the outpainted area. After making any adjustments, go to the image input switching node group and set the input parameter to 2 to use the adjusted image as a base for recovering the details. Let's take a moment to compare the before and after effects of these adjustments. In my experience with this workflow, after odd painting with the SDXL model, there usually isn't a noticeable difference in brightness or color between the odd painted area and the original image. Because of this, I generally don't use these models on the left, and I leave the input parameter set to 1. The first step to recovering the details is overlaying the original image using the image blend node onto the image that's been outpainted with XDXL. So here's the original image. And here's the image after we overlay it. You'll notice that while the details of the original image remain intact, there's an obvious seam around the edges. To get rid of that seam, we need to create a mask based on the outline of the original image. Then, using the Image Blend My Mask node on the right, we blend the two images on the left using that mask. With the Image Compare node, you'll see that the seam becomes much less visible. We blend again on the right side, and by this point, the seam has almost disappeared. If there's still a noticeable seam, you can repeat the process a few more times. Generally, this step should be enough. However, if some fuzzy seams remain, you can fix them by repainting with a flux model. The parameters are usually fine as default, but if needed, you can adjust the expand value of the group mask node group to tweak the size of the mask. Next up is the node group where we repaint the outpainted area using the flux model. I've added a LoRa node here to help fix specific issues like distorted hands, feet, faces, or bodies. I'll also include the download link for that below. You can choose whether to repaint the image before or after restoring the details, but I recommend leaving the input set to 1 and repainting after detail restoration. We also use the Girl Mask with Blur node to expand and blur the repainting mask, which smooths out any seams. You can adjust the expand and blur settings as needed and keep the denoise parameter in the key sampler at 0.95. Let's compare the changes before and after repainting. In this example, you might not see a huge difference since the XDXL of painting didn't cause major detail issues, like distorted hands or feet. But check out this example. After the XDXL of painting, the woman's hands are clearly distorted. After repainting with a flex model, the hand problem is fixed. If you still run into similar issues, just try repainting a few more times. Here's another one where the people on the street were distorted after XTXL painting, 
but after using the Flux model, it looks much better. With the Flux model, the original details remain mostly unchanged. So if you compare the repainted image to the original, you'll notice the details stay intact. Finally, we move to the last node group, upscaling. Since we shrunk the original image in the first node group, we need to upscale it here at the end. You can choose between two different models that upscale the image by four times. I'll put the download links below. Feel free to try out any other upscale models you prefer. I personally like the face-up model for upscaling human faces, which is why I'm using it here. In the upscale image by node, I set the scale by parameter to 0.5. So we are doubling the image size in the final step. You can adjust this value, but just make sure it's not too large for your graphics card to handle. The Flux model passes through this bus node, and we sample the upscaled image before generating the final output. All right, that's the complete walkthrough of this workflow. Did it make sense? If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.